Currently, 40% of Americans are people with skin of color, and this is estimated to grow to 50% by 2045. And globally, 80% of all people are with skin of color. However, most of the clinical studies and research and products on the market are not geared towards those with skin of color. The whole point of this video is to help you prevent things like this and this from occurring. Hi guys, I'm Dr. Alexis Stevens, a board certified dermatologist with a background in cosmetic chemistry. I take all of my knowledge and deliver it to you so that you can make the best skincare decisions. In today's video, we're going to go over what you need to know about skin of color. I'm going to provide you guys with a roadmap to help you navigate your skin if you are someone with skin of color or if you're someone who recommends products to those with skin of color or takes care of someone else with skin of color or treats patients with skin of color. If that sounds good to you, please give this video a like thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Please hit your notification bell so that you don't miss any videos. All right guys, without further ado, let's talk about skin. Skin of color is so diverse because it's made up of mixed ancestries. There's so many different pigment variances and this really holds true whether you are African American, Hispanic, Native American, Pacific Islander, East Indian, Asian, Middle Eastern, Caribbean, African, Arabic, Malaysian, Latino, Eskimo, or a combination of everything. What truly determines your skin tone is the melanocyte. The amount of melanin and the organization of that melanin within the melanosomes and the keratinocytes. Everyone, regardless of their skin color or ethnicity, has the same number of melanocytes. So looking at this photo here, it's the quality and the quantity of melanin that's produced that makes up an individual skin tone. The photo on the left depicts melanosomes in someone with a deeper skin tone. You can see that the cells have a large quantity of melanin to the point where the melanin is evenly dispersed throughout the cell. If you compare this to the photo on the right, the melanosomes in a lighter skin person, they are much less diffuse and lighter in color. Melanocytes in skin of color are more active. They produce more melanin and they package them in larger, more numerous melanosomes. So for those that are melanin deprived or have fairer skin, the melanosomes are much smaller and really only hang out at the basal layer of the epidermis. Whereas in those that are melanin rich, the melanosomes are much larger and they are throughout the epidermis, even at the stratum corneum. So while ethnicity and race largely determines how melanin is dispersed throughout the skin, you can't forget that the environment, hormones, your health, your stress, your sun exposure all play a very large role. So now just to give you a little bit of background about melanin, melanin is the true MVP. Melanin is actually a natural antioxidant and protectant. Melanin absorbs and scatters energy from UV and visible light to protect the epidermal cells from damage. It also works as an antioxidant by neutralizing free radicals and working as a barrier for your skin. Those with deeper skin tones like myself actually have a built-in SPF of 13, whereas someone with fairer skin has an SPF built-in of three. So that is why those with deeper skin tones are less susceptible to photo damage. However, while melanin is magic, it is not invincible. You still need to wear sunscreen. SPF 13 is not enough to protect you from the harmful UV rays. Melanin also prevents aging by protecting the skin cell's DNA. This is where the adage black don't crack comes from. Being melanin rich definitely keeps your skin looking younger, longer. Melanin also strengthens your skin by protecting the cells that produce collagen. The more collagen you have, the stronger your skin will be. Okay, so now that you have some background on melanin, let's go through the differences in skin of color at both the epidermal and the dermal level. For epidermal differences, studies show that the stratum corneum and those with skin of color contain more layers and therefore is thicker. There's 22 layers in African American patients and 17 layers in Caucasian patients on average. Additionally, there's more lipid content, which can lead to more oily skin. 
there's also more melanin content and more melanin equals more pigment. If severe enough, this actually can affect quality of life and that is why I have an entire hyperpigmentation series so that I can help as many people as possible fight their hyperpigmentation. In addition, the transepidermal water loss or tool seems to be greater in those with skin of color. This impaired barrier function is what contributes to the sensitivity of topical medications or serums, creams, etc. There's also a decrease in the inflammatory response to UVB rays, which is why there's a less propensity to burn in the sun, though everyone of every shade can get a sunburn. Skin of color also has a decrease in vitamin D production. And then for the dermal variances, those with skin of color tend to have a thicker and more compact dermis. In addition, those with skin of color have more superficial blood vessels that are more prominent and dilated, so bruises can lead to PIH pretty easily. And those with skin of color have larger sebaceous glands that can lead to more oil production. And within the dermis, there's a greater number of fibroblasts, collagen, and elastin, which is why photo aging or fine lines and wrinkles happen later, like in the fifth or sixth decade of life. However, it's also why scars and keloids are more prominent because the more collagen, elastin, and fibers that are there, the higher the propensity to have an exaggerated response in the healing cascade. So now that you have all of the background that you need on melanin, let's discuss the unique needs of skincare when it comes to melanin-rich skin. The most important thing is that you want to make sure that your skincare regimen is tailored for someone with high reactive skin. Deeper skin tones are more prone to irritations, so you want to make sure that you're using products that are clinically proven to be effective, but also without causing any injury to the epidermis or the dermis. Okay, so now I'm going to walk you through how to build a regimen. Number one, you want protective but effective actives. But before we talk about any actives, you already know what I'm going to say. You need to be wearing sunscreen. Your sunscreen needs to be protective. UVB, UVA, broad spectrum with visible light protection. If you're not sure which type of sunscreen is going to be recommended for you, I have an entire video on sunscreen. Number two, your actives should really be based off of your specific and unique skin needs, not what ingredient is trending, not what your best friend is using, and not what your favorite celebrity has told you to purchase, your specific skin needs. So whether you're treating acne or dark spots or looking for anti-aging benefits, make sure that you're choosing an active that is effective but gentle and formulated for reactive skin. Again, if you guys really aren't sure what's going to be the best ingredient for you, you want to look at your specific needs and then you can check out my other videos that will address the different skincare ingredients that I recommend for reactive or those with deeper skin tones. For step three, again, you want to focus on prevention and protection. You want your cleansers and your moisturizers to be super hydrating. You never want anything to leave your skin feeling stripped. You never want your natural lipids to be removed with the different products that you're putting on. Even if you have oily skin, you want to focus on products that are hydrating. If you're not sure which moisturizers to use, I list several throughout my videos. But if you guys want a specific videos on moisturizers, please let me know down below and I'll be more than happy to make that for you. And the fourth thing to focus on is making sure that your products are accessible. Accessible to your budget, but also accessible in that you can actually obtain them and they're not constantly sold out. The reason is because consistency is key. So if you get something that's way out of your budget and you're not going to be able to continue with that product, you may not be able to continue to see results. Or if you get something that's super popular and always sold out and you can't replace it, you're not going to be able to continue with results. So consistency is is key. And just as a side note, if you are someone who is treating patients with skin of color, please make sure to remember that you're treating the genotype, the DNA of the patient, and not the phenotype, the way that they look on the outward appearance. It's really important to dig deep, ask questions, and figure out that patient's background. I hope that this video helped you guys. If so, please give it a like, thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate you. Until next time, guys, be well.